my Madden Rebuild Warriors. It's time to review week 12, and we start with the Jags at the Lions. 12-30 game on Thanksgiving. Yes, we had three games to our delight that dropped last Saturday. Let's get into it. The box score. Jacksonville getting it done. Outscoring Detroit 11-7 in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at the stats. Now this is going to be very hard for me because I have uh, like a broken finger. Hmm, how am I going to do this? Um, wow, I didn't realize this was going to be that difficult. <laughs> I uh, I jammed my finger playing basketball yesterday, and I mean, dude, it can't. My pinky is the biggest finger on my hand right now, and uh, I didn't realize how much I was gonna need that to do this video. So let me take a drink of coffee. Um, I'm not gonna let it stop us. No. All right. What a way to start off the video, like for real. All right, we'll, we'll do it this way. All right, so the Jags got it done. Trevor Lawrence, two touchdowns, one rushing. You know, say Jones, isn't that? No, he was on, um, was J Zay Jones wasn't on Detroit, was he, a couple years ago? I I can't remember. I know he was on the Raiders, but don't matter. JMO, two for 72 and one. Laporta gets a touchdown. Shamir Gibbs, 100 yards and a touchdown. I mean, not a bad game for the Jags. Like, not a lot of turnovers. Just um, one of those games that didn't go their way. So, I mean, I really wasn't looking forward to that game to begin with. It wasn't, uh, wasn't great. Um, but here, let's go to the second game, the 415 game. Uh, I believe I called this one. I said all these NFC North teams were going to, or AFC North teams were going to win. And that started with the Browns. And that Jameson Winston was going to get the backup boost. I don't know if it's something that's in Madden, but it's happened. But the first start guys, like in the season, get it in. Um, but in typical Dallas fashion, they threw up all over themselves. Mainly the man named Dak Prescott. Throwing four interceptions. Which gave the Browns short field. Pollard still got 20 for 137. Brady Cooks. Lamb got his touchdown. Just not enough. Yeah, we, we called that one. Not much to go over there. Uh, to me, that was a boring game. I don't Just... Not something I'm looking forward to. Because I was looking forward to this game here. Two franchise-focused teams. Got the primetime 8 p.m. Thanksgiving Thursday night game. And our Chargers are charging. Justin Herbert is... He's on a roll right now. It's what? He had four. And four and a rushing touchdown. So that's nine. Now he has three passing touchdowns. Excuse me. He's gone over like 300, 400 yards in the last three games. He is cooking. Tra well, and which means Travion Henderson is falling off a little bit here. Josh Palmer and Kate Stovar are his uh, security blankets. Quentin Johnson has become a prolific red zone threat. He's catching touchdowns like crazy right now. And um, no sacks in defense with Santi Samuel, a couple interceptions. Now, as far as our Titans go, disappointing for Jaden Daniels through the two picks. 
Uh, he did get, you know, 58 yards rushing, which is okay. Quez Watkins with the touchdown. Uh, just, you know, we have two teams that we control battling against each other, so uh, I I wouldn't really expect a, uh, a huge, uh, you know, a huge scoring game. Uh, we, we're trading our defenses to stop what the other team does. So this was a close one, and uh, Chargers uh, pulled it out at the end. And you know, Titans are still good, man. Uh, they're dangerous. Are they Colts dangerous? Uh, I think the Colts got the division locked up, but right now Titans are in the playoffs, I believe. And speaking of the playoffs and stats, we'll be doing that in another video uh, this week. You will see that tomorrow after this one drops. Now here's. The game everyone was looking forward to. And it was crazy. Comeback win here for the Ravens and Lamar. 366 yards passing, one touchdown. Another 150 on the ground and two. I mean, that would go. Lamar's what? QB1, you know, in the DraftKings probably this week. Wicks. Wicks coming on a little bit. Mark Andrews, 10 for 184. Wow. Some a couple tight ends smelling that Kelsey's no longer playing right, you know, right now with his injury. Um, yeah, Milton had to come this game. Patrick Mahomes got hurt, and I believe, and then you know, 400 yards and three. Checo, 100 yards. Love it, got in. Chiefs had it. Um, I recommend going and watching this game if you haven't already. It, w it went into overtime, and Baltimore won it. You know, we had to make we had to make some uh, editing decisions to keep the, the video to an hour, so it, you know it ended a certain way. But I re recommend that one. I mean, if you weren't watching that one already, I don't know what your problem is, man. What's your problem? That kid's a great game, and I also call that one too called Baltimore beating Kansas City and being one of the teams that could give Kansas City a loss. And then we go to the second 1 p.m. game, Arizona, a franchise focus team that we were controlling against another franchise focus team, the New England Patriots. I mean, I I was really kind of pulling for the Patriots more here, but the Cardinals are picking up steam even more to get with a touchdown. Brown. I mean, they got two Superstar wide receivers, which is great for them. Elijah Higgins got in the box. Trey McBride. It's kind of steady Eddie. BJ Ojolari having a great season. Really is. JC Jackson. Revenge game interception. How about that? Chris Abrams Draney also gets an interception. And man, we just cannot get Drake May going. Just can't. I mean, we even try to get his legs going. Not enough. I, I don't know what to do here. I, I think Parker has to be the number one right now until next year when we, we get a legit number one. When he's on the field, he produces. I moved him in and out of the lineup trying to find which lineup of wide receivers works, and he, he produces when he's on the field. You know, I think part of it is size. And speed uh, and strength and weight matter when it comes to wide receivers because 6'2, 6'3, 6'4 wide receivers, they do pretty well in slow sim. And then, a disappointing result here our Carolina Panthers just couldn't get it done. It's just limitations to this playbook. I mean, look, Chuba Hubbard, 6.9 yards to carry, Bryce Young, 348. Harris Marshall's back on uh, his game, 12 from 166. Mingo, 8 from 103. Yeah, 103. Now, here's where the changes might come. And I don't know how he and Harris got on the field, but he did, and he scored a touchdown. Here's where the changes might need to come still. Now, Mingo and Marshall have been producing all year, but oh, McCall Hardman and Burton probably need to be switched. And um, McMillan might find his way back in the lineup if one of these guys helped produce, but... We have a losing record right now, and it's not good. 
despite the stats that these guys are putting up. I mean, Rule Levis wasn't great, but Juwan Johnson just was cutting our defense like crazy. So, got to clean some things up there, but I, I, they're, they're pretty much out of it. The Falcons getting a win. I mean, this game is really uh, was a non-factor. It didn't really matter. Two losing franchises. Um, not focus teams, but just two franchises that are circling the drain right now, waiting for the season to end. So, I mean, the score is indicative of what we thought of this matchup here. Now, here's a team we also guarantee, well, not guarantee, but we knew needed a win, and they got the win. Joe Burrow, 331 of them, two. Mixing four and a half yards to carry. Of Dunes really coming on. Um, yeah, it's amazing what Dunes is doing right now. He's he's one of the hottest rookie wide receivers. Absolutely. Defense is balling. Uh, Logan Wilson getting defensive player of the week for the NFC. Good for him. Our defense is playing very very well so another another outcome we call we call that all three nfc north teams would win and they would and the only reason why the fourth couldn't is because they were playing one of ours and then another satisfactory win here that we needed chicago bears leading the nfc north get the win kale williams not the greatest not great jk Dobbins, 27 carries for two and a half yards Yikes. Like, they're feeding the ball, and then who? someone got hurt. I forget who it was. Rashid he got hurt again. That's right. Uh, but ever since Cole Komet came back, they're trying to just force him the ball, man. We don't really need him. Not with the wide receivers we have. It's like Madden's trying to get his catch catches and yards up. But good one there. For the Bears, our Bears. And we also call this one Bills in a landslide. Blowing them out. Not much to really talk about here. But, you know. They get it done. But gets a bad team. Interception machines. That playbook. You want to talk about playbooks that gets interceptions. That is the Buffalo Bills. And then uh, I got this wrong. I, I really thought the Broncos had a chance here. They were kind of gaming some momentum. And Mac Jones still playing all right, I guess. All right. Sutton's coming on. Mims is coming on. But just not. You know, just not. But we thought... So, I guess good for the Raiders. They, they're they uh, creeping up into the playoff contention here as we come down to the stretch. Miami, I mean, they should have won, and they did win. Tua, 346 for five. Cedric Wilson, he's the man. Uh, Tyreek Hill did not exist. He does not exist. It's, it's Waddle. Wilson, A Chain, Sanders, and then Hill's just, I mean, he's got to be killing people. But Miami's, you know, they're really good, man. I, th we call this, but we thought that the Rams would probably win bigger than this. Stafford's still throwing for well over 300 yards a game. He's got so many weapons here crazy AJ Brown Devonta Smith they're starting to come around a little bit but really just not the Eagles here it's good for them that they lost they're they're they're, they're they need to worry about um, drafts draft position and then the 49ers they what they had a shutout last week and now they only gave up three points to brought uh, JJ McCarthy and, and the Buccaneers are really struggling without Rashad White. Purdy's 300 yards. Also got a rushing touchdown. Ayuk, 
Ronnie Bell, Gray and Bell filling in for the uh, injured Debo Samuels, getting it done. Yeah. Marshawn Lloyd is not Rashad White. So, there you go. That was Sunday Night Football. And they're coming here to Monday Night Football. The Colts <clears throat> talk about machines. Anthony Richardson in the MVP com conversation. Jonathan Wilson. I mean, that's it's so tough to stop right there. Rushing the ball over 200 yards. Dosh Downs getting it done. Yeah, what a what a what a start here. Well, can't even stay start because we're 12 games into the season, 12 weeks. But the Colts are really really on a roll here. All right, so that's the games. We're not gonna go to stats and records. This because we're doing the uh, week 12 breakdown video, which covers a. Uh, more of um, the stats and stuff and then you'll see that tomorrow that'll be records division races we'll also go over the playoff race um, you know all, all, all that stuff that's more of a like I said there's seasons within a season and we're gonna go over the last four game stretch that season which is the th quarter the th three the third quarter of the NFL season. We'll break down who was the best team in uh, week 9 through 12. And uh, get ready for the playoff race. Because uh, we take an early look at seedings. Look at playoff MVP race. And stat, you know, all that stuff. That'll all be the next video. So this is just looking at last week, week 12. Look at the injuries. And looking ahead to week 13. All right, so we're drinking the coffee. We're reviewing, previewing, and spewing out facts. The Bears have no injuries. The Bengals, they got problems, man. Gadsden's still out. Jones is out. Cap is out. Uh, yeah, they got issues. So they're coming in. They're coming in down the stretch on a wing and a prayer here with their right entire right side of their line missing. You know, tough. Bills are healthy. Broncos have some injuries. Watson's out for the for the year. They can really use Dalvin Thomason. Rashad White's out. Pretty much for the rest of the year. Cards are healthy. Chargers lost JT Woods. It hurts a little bit, but he'll be back. Kelsey's out another game. Colts. They're healthy. Commanders, uh, it's okay. They can survive. They have, they have a really nice backup rookie left tackle. They're training, star development. He's not up to the overall that Charles Leno is, but they can, they're surviving that. They're, they're on a roll. Some injuries here for the Cowboys. Dolphins are healthy. Eagles are healthy. Falcons, uh, they need them. I mean, that's their best offensive lineman. They need him back. But they're not really going anywhere. 49ers are pretty much healthy. Giants are pretty much much pretty much healthy. Jags are healthy. Who who gives a shit about backup tight ends? But the Jets just suck in general. Um Lions are pretty much healthy. Packers are completely healthy. Panthers are completely healthy. Patriots completely healthy. Raiders pretty healthy. You know, they lost Kyron Williams for the season. Ravens are healthy. Saints need Breezy. Charbonnet's out for the year. Steelers are healthy. Texans use Tart. The Titans are completely healthy. And the Vikings are completely healthy. So, that is injuries. That's what happened in week 12. Let's get into the award winners for week 12 and the schedule. And a preview of week 13. Taking a look at the MVP awards, Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, kind of some usual suspects here. 
But we have two defensive players for both uh, franchise focus teams. BJ Ojolari, three sacks, seven tackles. And Logan Wilson, five tackles, one sack, two interceptions that went for a touchdown. So those guys get some boosts and um, looking good for our franchise focus teams, especially the Cardinals are on a roll. Brock Purdy gets a boost to his awareness. He's really good. And then Miles Murphy, he got a dev upgrade for the Bengals, which is great. And then another one we saw was Michael Hoek. I think that's how you say the name. He went up in depth upgrade, but he's not a franchise focused player. Here's a quick overview of the schedule. And as we zoom in closer to look at the times, some great matchups. And in a couple seconds, we will get into each game individually. And we start with Thursday night football. The Chiefs travel to Vegas. Vegas is one of those teams at six and six. They're just on the outside of uh, that last wild card spot. As we have mentioned before, the wild card uh, in the AFC is about the tightest race. In the NFC, there's really no race I see right now for that last wild card spot. But, you know, five games go, there are always things that can happen because we're entering the fourth season of the 2024 season. Uh, I like the Chiefs in that game, by the way. Uh, then we have a game that I don't think anyone's interested in, but I'm going to get take pit here because Mike Tomlin's always been a 500-ish uh, coach. His teams fight, and uh, I and the Jets suck. I mean, they're just – it's Aaron Rodgers' retirement song. So give me Pittsburgh here, and uh, I think they handle them quite nicely. Now, this is a me very meaningful game, not only for division control, but for that last wild card spot. And uh, the Bengals, our Bengals, a franchise folks team, really needs a win here. Now, a couple things balancing here. The Cleveland Browns do have a backup quarterback in James Winston, but to balance that, the entire right side of the line for the Bengals is out and trying to stop those pass rushers tough so that's gonna be a tough good game uh our carolina panthers have lost five in a row i can't believe it but they get i think a little bit of a i mean they really are they blew it with the stretch of games here by losing to the saints but they get a win here they can beat new york uh they can beat the broncos and they can get a, a three game winning streak and i think that starts here uh we really want to keep building bryce young Terrace marshall jr uh, Jonathan Mingo. So give me our Carolina Panthers here at one o'clock. And then you never know what Detroit team's going to show up. I don't really see Indy laying an egg here. Indy's one of the best teams in the NFL. Them, the Chiefs, I mean, they're all, it's all in the end of the AFC. The AFC is bonkers. I know the Cowboys have a really good overall. You have the 49ers are great. They got a great quarterback, running back, and weapons, but give me Indy. And then a franchise focus team of ours, the Tennessee Titans, at home against the Jags, who are inconsistent. Uh, Tennessee's in the playoffs right now, and they need to keep fighting. So I, I'm, I could see Madden, you know, giving Jacksonville the, the win here to like kind of make the, the race. For the wild card spot, interesting, but we're home. Let's get a win here. Jags just don't have it. And then another franchise focused team of ours, losers of two in a row, um, at home against Buffalo. Buffalo's fighting for that playoff spot too, but I, I'm hoping you know if the if the Titans lose, give me give me a win for the New England Patriots. We're, we're struggling here to find an offense for New England that works. But you know they got a great secondary, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take our New England Patriots here at home, and then what should be another win in my opinion for our Arizona Cardinals. I know they got to go on the road again, um, but Green Bay just doesn't have it this year. They underachieving, I will say, with the weapons that they have. Um, but Arizona is just on a roll, and they're uh, looking to lock up that final. 
um, not final. Are they the final wild cards? But it doesn't matter. But lock up their positioning as a wild card team going down the stretch here. So give it, give me Arizona. Another game that really doesn't matter. I I don't know. Does anyone want to watch this? It matters for draft positioning. Mm. I'm going to, I think New York beats up on bad teams. New York has a really good defense. So I'm going to take New York here. And I just don't think Seattle has it. I know Seattle's home, but I think New York has a really good defense that plays well in the slow sim. So give me New York on the road in Seattle going to 4-8. and eight. Franchise focus team here has what should be a layup. I know they're on the road in Denver. Tough match. I mean, and Denver has a good secondary. Coley McKinnistry and Patrick Tain, two Alabama corners, uh, along with Simmons in at safety. Uh, got some decent talent here on this Denver's team, but I mean, it's it's the Chargers and the Colts, you know, fighting it out for who's the number one seed in the AFC. So give me the Chargers. Important game here. Five and six teams fighting for uh, that division control. Tampa Bay is without their best team. I mean, their best running back, their best player. Uh, they have the better team, in my opinion. You know they're inconsistent, and I don't I don't like Will Levis. But if Tampa Bay gives Jawan Johnson the middle of the field, it could be New Orleans game. But I'm going to take Tampa Bay going on the road and getting it done, taking control of that division. And then the final 4 p.m. game, Dallas goes to Washington. Washington also another wild card team looking to lock up their uh, position in the wild card but also they have a chance to go for the division and uh, Dallas isn't the same team on the road and hey Justin uh, Fields I think he can do it they're a hot team the Washington Commanders give me the Commanders at home you know record wise this isn't a great Sunday night football game but Philly always plays at home in prime time the fans always want them to win. I mean, they're fighting for the number one overall pick in the draft, but I think um, I think Philly gets this. Philly still has. They're looking for revenge from losing in the Super Bowl. Philly wants this. Prime time at home. Give me Philly in an upset for a revenge from their Super Bowl loss last season. And then Monday night finishes the week off, week 13, with uh, our – Chicago Bears traveling to San Francisco to take on the uh, NFC West division leaders. M maybe the Bears give them a fight, but I just don't see our Bears getting a win here. You know, if they go to 6-6, six and six, they're still leading the division. Um, Packers probably aren't going to win. Vikings, I think, are on a bye. Lions probably aren't going to win, so, I mean... It's not the most must-win position for Chicago. I'm not even sure a team that's over 500 wins this division. That also could be the NFC South division that doesn't finish over 500. I mean, all, all the good teams are in the AFC. So I, I just want to see our Chicago team play well, get some stats. But I don't. I'm not sure that they have it in them to win this on the road against a great team who's playing great right now. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, the 49ers, unfortunately, on Monday Night Football, in my opinion. But we just want to see our Chicago Bears play well. So tell me who you think is going to win this week. Who do you think is going to have the biggest performances? And um, what games are you most looking forward to? Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. And as always, please like and subscribe. My Madden Rebuild Warriors. It is rebuild season as we head towards... Uh, you know, the off-season workouts, voluntary, involuntary, and all that stuff. So, uh, love to hear from you. So, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.